Well, did I make my goal for March? I did get my tax return, but I wasn't planning on it for this month. Hi guys, Ashley from Ash Cash Budget here. If you're new to this channel, I am currently following the Dave Ramsey baby steps. I am on baby step number two, paying off about $42,000 in debt. Here we go over my budget, my debt snowball, some vlogs, some hauls, that kind of stuff. So if you want to continue to follow me on my journey, click the little red subscribe button down below and the bell icon so you're notified when I post something new. This month I had a really, really lofty goal. If you watch my March 2019 budget plan, you'll see I had a huge goal in mind. And I was not expecting to get my tax return this month, so I was trying not to include that in what I was doing to reach my goals. So my first paycheck was $2,350.56. The next paycheck, there wasn't really much going on for work, so I only got $927.17. My boyfriend's half of the bills, which is this housing here, was $503.87. And then this month, I finally hustled. I know I said at the beginning of 2019 that my word for the year was hustle, and I kind of felt very slow on that since January there wasn't much going on, February, and then I had a bunch of medical stuff I had to do, and I just didn't feel like I was hustling. I was a little disappointed, but you know what? I really feel like I have hustled this month. I have $639.11 in side hustles. So let's go over what exactly I brought in for that. Down here, Instacart, my first Instacart deposit was $146.42. My second one was $149.73. Those are the largest that I've gotten from Instacart by far. And then YouTube, thank you all, it's all because of you. It's been over a year since I got my last and first YouTube check because of the changes that they made as far as subscribers and watch hours that they needed. And then I would dealt with um, a little bug where they couldn't show ads. And finally, all that was worked through. I had like $75 sitting in my AdSense account because you have to reach 100 before they pay you out. Finally, everything went well again. And between the end of January and throughout February, I made enough to finally get paid out $115.25. So thank you all, I really appreciate you all. I don't think I'll get enough like to get paid out every month just yet, but maybe every two or three months. So that is definitely something to look forward to. And then I started DoorDash. So yeah, I do really want to go over Instacart and DoorDash more with you guys, but I've been trying to like get a little bit more experience and get some numbers so I could really kind of go over it with you guys of what I'm kind of getting and all that, but I really do want to talk to you guys about that eventually. But with DoorDash, I finally started DoorDash. I got a cash tip of $3 that I deposited. My next Instacart deposit was $36.42, and then my first deposit from DoorDash, because they pay out weekly, Instacart and DoorDash do, I made $177.31 from the first week, which was actually like four days, I think, worth. And that's just because I was really hustling hard. I didn't have much going on, so I was just door dashing it up. So that, that was a good amount. And then at the end of the month, I was trying to make a little bit more, and I'll explain for one of the categories down below. So I did a little bit more of Amazon MTurk. It's been a while since I did it because that is a really slow way to make money, but it's a way to make money. So I was able to deposit $3.98 from MTurk. And then I had a little bit more cash tips from DoorDash that I deposited so I could have it be there for one of the cat categories down below. So that was another $7. And then my tax returns, I had my state return for 404 and my federal was 168 so that's a total of $572 exactly. Now I don't think that is too bad. I know Dave Ramsey suggests, you know, trying to get it as close to zero and I think for a variable income and not exactly sure where my income will go throughout the year, I don't think that $572 is too much. I think that is pretty dang good. 
And next year, if I keep hustling like this with my side hustles, I might owe. So I should ideally set aside money for taxes and I actually downloaded Stride. I can track my mileage through that and it also gives you an estimate of how much you might owe for like your business expenses basically. But I don't think I'm going to necessarily do it this year since I'm trying so hard to pay down my debt and then plan on cash flowing it next year. As long as it doesn't get out of hand, I'll keep a, my eye on the numbers that come through in stride and if it gets too out of hand, I might have to start setting some money aside from my side hustles in order to pay for taxes. Now once I'm debt free and if I continue to do side hustles, I'll definitely put that money aside. But I'll show you what I ended up doing with that $572 down below because I did not want to include it in any of the goals that I had set forth at the beginning of the month because I wasn't planning on necessarily getting it this month. I was thinking maybe April. So I'll show you at the end of this video what I did. So in savings, there was a couple things that kind of ebbed and flowed. Car maintenance, I had to go ahead and do $283.03 towards that. I did try to go see about doing Uber Eats and my car failed. And they said that I needed some work done, but it was like at, you know, some other um, major like repair place where they're all over the nation. And I have a personal mechanic that I go to that's more local. So I went to ask them about the work. I did need two new tires. So I got two new tires for $300.04. I really needed some windshield wipers, which did fail the thing, but after I bought them, I just bought them from Walmart, so they were $13.80. I realized that I really needed them a long time ago. And then I needed to go for my regular oil change. I was kind of far behind. They did an oil change and changed my air filter. So that was $76.54. Now I would have been just a little bit short which is why I got the MTurk stuff done and deposited the last $7 from the DoorDash cash tips. And I also transferred the rest of the money. I only had $7.42 in my phone sinking fund. So I transferred that for my car maintenance as well. So I could get this oil change done for $76.54. So I do have $2.08 still left in there. Once I post my April 2019 budget plan, you'll see exactly how much I'm going to be planning on spending on my car for some work that I need to get done. So I'm not going to go into detail here about it. I'll talk to you in the April budget plan because that's where I'm going to cash flow the rest of my repairs. So that $2.08 is just going to be there in car maintenance until... April. I made it happen before the end of the month so that I could still keep to my goals down below and as well as not touch my tax return for this. I was going to put some money into medical, but the car maintenance kind of jumped up in priority, but I did pay a bill. I paid um, one of my major bills, which was actually my deductible was included in that for $350. I did pay for a blood work lab bill so it came out to I got a 15% discount just by asking always ask I asked them is there some sort of discount that I could get for paying in cash right now they gave me 15% off and I paid $382.03 and it was like 400 and something before so that was awesome so I still have a balance of $590.11 but in my April budget plan I'll tell you a couple more that I paid and I still have a few more that I need to pay and as well as some other plans. So that money that I had, I'm probably going to be using up all of this, but that's okay. That's what that is there for. I brought that down to zero so I could pay for the car maintenance stuff I needed to this month. Registration, I did get my car registered for two years this month. I had about $60 in there and it was $95.50 to renew it for two years. That was about $100 plus a small discount for doing it online. With the money that I already had in there, I just paid another $35.12 towards it. So this brings the balance down to zero. But my car is registered for two years, which should get me through the rest of my debt journey for sure. So I'm actually going to get rid of this sinking fund come next month. I won't save up for registration because by the time it comes around again, I will just cash flow it. 
phone. I did not put anything into this this month. Since I did get my phone fixed at the beginning of the month, which was $50.82, I should be good for a while, but I do want to start putting money into this again. I just kind of have to stabilize back out after the car repair and the medical bills. And then I'll start adding to this sinking fund like $20 a month. Um, and so I just went ahead and transferred that $7.42 to the car fund so I could take care of that stuff. That was a priority. So right now I have $0 in that sinking fund. Gifts, I really need to. I have three sisters' birthdays coming up, the twins and the littlest sister. I really need to start getting some money in there. So I did go ahead and put $50 in there since I only had $15.68 before. So that'll bring me up to $65.68. And shows I'm not touching, but I'm also not paying. So that's sitting at $68.40. Housing is pretty regular. This is the bills that me and my boyfriend split. Rent for $850. City was $7409. Electric $3775. And internet was $4589. So that came out to $1,007.73. So I divide that in half. And that was the number up above that I showed you, that 500 and some dollars that he pays. Although I do take off, I have to pay this health insurance, $150. And I get my health insurance through his work, so I just basically take it off of what he owes me. But I put it here because I am accountable for that. So instead of getting his $500 and paying him back 150 I subtract that off. I hope that makes sense. But these regular bills down here, this is what I am solely responsible for. Phone, $85.95. Car insurance, $100. And then that health insurance. And of course, I told you at the beginning of the month, I had that stupid tax of a transfer fee for $1 for kind of going over in my checking account. My cash envelopes, my gas did have to go a little bit up because of the side hustles I've been doing. So I actually did my regular cash stuffing of $100, which I usually do for gas, and then I started doing a bunch of DoorDash, and I had some pretty good days with Instacart. I think this was actually before my cash stuffing, so I actually had to do an extra $30. And then I decided to go ahead and pull out $120 for my second cash stuffing. So in total for gas, I actually did $250 versus my usual $200, which is $100 per paycheck. So I might be upping that. I'm just I'm trying to figure out exactly how much I need per month with doing these side hustles. Medical was, as usual, $25 per paycheck, $50 for the month. Cats was 20 per paycheck, 40 for the month. Personal, 50 per paycheck, 100 for the month. And because of my lofty goals, I skipped hair, clothing, and wallet money. And then I skipped groceries and household. This is covered mostly by the church checks. Me and my boyfriend split duties at a church on Sundays. So some weeks it's him, some weeks it's me. And we just put that money directly into groceries and household so that we're both contributing to those things without it coming out of our normal paychecks. Now I will put towards it sometimes, which is why I do have it in my cash envelopes categories. And just in case anything changes, I have it there. But I normally don't fund it unless I, I have that extra income to kind of do so or if we need some extra money in there. And here it comes. This is my lofty goals. Did I make it? I think so. So $120, that is my normal minimum payment for all my student loans and it spreads between. And my big lofty goal, I really wanted to push really, really hard to get my third student loan out of seven paid off. The payoff amount came out to $2,147.88. And I made it. I made it. I did it. I made it with all just my regular income and the side hustles. I did it as well as putting some a little bit of money towards my car, but I did it. I only have four student loans left. I will go over the exact details with you for my debt snowball update. This is going to come out before that, so please stay tuned and give that a watch because since I got my tax return and I was not trying to put that towards my goal because sure, I could have counted that towards my goal and just, you know, put the extra $572 somewhere else. But you know what? I wasn't trying to rely on that. I was trying to make it with my regular income and my side hustles. So all of that $572, I have this as another Fed loan snowball payment. 
that went to my next student loan. So this was the payoff amount for my third one. And now I'm on my fourth one and that $572 went straight to that. So all of my income tax return went straight to my next student loan in line. I think that is really exciting. Not only did I make my initial goal, which was a huge, huge goal. I was worried I wasn't gonna make it, but since I hustled, 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 this is the year of the hustle, I paid it. I like how every dollar tallies this up for you. I was able to put $2,839.88 towards debt this month. I think that is just mind blowing. That is amazing. I don't know what else to say. I met, I met my goal and I blew it out of the water, I think. I don't know. You guys tell me. My second paycheck was not very much. Like I said, I have a variable income. Sometimes it can be low, but I think I hustled it with Instacart and DoorDash. So that was definitely a positive. So if you'll see, I'm definitely making some money from that and I wanna go over those side hustles a little bit more detail, hopefully in the future. But I will of course put the links up above to subscribe and another video YouTube will suggest for you guys and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.